you know me and stuff and you didn't know this, but like this whole side of my face and neck and stuff is numb. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Lauren, if you're new here. Um, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I found out that I had cancer. Um, I did make a video like this about a year ago, um, but I feel like honestly I missed some things just like in the video and stuff. So if you did watch that and you're watching this, it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. Um, but I kinda just wanted to tell you guys, for the people who didn't wanna watch, or didn't know that I posted that, um, someone actually did reach out to me and asked if I could make a video on it because um, she didn't know that I had already posted one. So here I am making one. So I don't want to keep this intro too long, so let's just get into the video. So I know my shoulder is like red, but I literally burnt myself with my curling iron. I literally screamed at the top of my lungs and it hurts like so bad. So that's why, I, <laughs> that's why my shoulder is so red. It hurts like crap. Let's start with fifth grade year, okay? We're gonna start way, way back. So fifth grade year, I'm at school, blah, blah, whatever and stuff. I end up getting strep throat. So I miss school obviously and stuff. And then um, while, while I was having strep or whatever and stuff, I had this big ball on the side of my right neck and it looked like literally I swallowed a bouncy ball. And we had gone to the doctor because obviously I had strep and stuff and we had mentioned it to them and they were like, oh, it's just a swollen gland that happens when you get strep or when you're sick, which it truly does like and stuff. Um, it'll go away, like, if not by the time you're done with strep, um, within the next couple weeks, blah, blah. Months later, I still have it. Didn't grow or anything, but it's still, like, sticking out of the side of my neck. Like, when I would go like this, you could see it, and everyone at school would always joke about that. Like, I just saw a bouncy ball, and, like, I would just go along with it because I didn't know what it was or anything. So then, sixth grade year, we go and get my physical oh, it's nothing to worry about, it's just a swollen gland, like, you know, like, it'll go away, it, like, there's no need to do blood work, no need to do testing, because it's just a swollen gland and it'll go away. Obviously, they're doctors, we believe them, because they're supposed to be the experts and everything, so we believe them. A year later, I go back for my, um, it'd been my physical for... 7th grade? Yeah. So it's for 7th grade. We tell them again. It's still there. It's been almost like two years now since I've had this. It's not going away. Blah, blah. It's nothing to worry about. T trust me. It's just a swollen gland. It's no, no biggie. It's nothing, nothing, nothing. Blah, blah. Okay? Go to my physical for my 8th grade year, July 1st. I'm, it's crazy that I remember like all these dates, but I truly remember like every date. So then... um. We go, you know, like we're doing everything. And then my mom's like, okay, look, like this has been here for this long. Like, why isn't this going away? Like maybe we should do testing because something isn't right because why isn't this going away? Because usually a swollen gland goes away, if not in a few weeks, within a few months. So then she's like, you know what? Maybe you're right. It doesn't hurt to do testing, blah, blah, that whole thing. So then I go and get blood work done. And then, um... And then I also had an appointment with a gland specialist here in my like in my town. So then I go, so that it was like a Monday that my physical was, and then um, that, no, so it was a Monday my physical was, and then it was like that Wednesday I had the thing with um, the gland specialist. So we go in, we're showing him it, he's like feeling it and everything, and he literally looks us dead in the eyes and says, I don't feel comfortable, like, treating this because I don't know for sure what it is so I'm gonna have you guys go up to University of Chicago um so then he, that's pretty like that's pretty much what he said how he was just like don't get like I mean we were so happy that he said that like it, like he was honest and he said that he didn't feel comfortable like treating it blah blah or whatever and stuff because he didn't know what it was and he didn't want to misdiagnose me so then he calls up there and he gets us in for that Friday um with like a gland specialist up there so then we go up there um i believe i had an ultrasound done this day um and then i was just like she was pretty much just examining it everything like that and then she said how we would hear back from her within a week 
and you and she said like and usually it takes that long blah blah just for like the testing to come back and everything so then we are on our way home and we picked up my sister and we were gonna go to dinner so we were literally pulling into the dinner place and my mom gets a call and she answers it and it is that doctor saying that we should see um, a gland surgeon um, who will kind of like take over and stuff because um, he'll know more about it and everything if we like go to him or whatever and stuff and we she can get us in on that next Monday so literally it was Friday and then Monday um, so then we're all like freaking out all weekend saying like that like you know like it can't be cancer it's probably like Hashimoto's disease just because not saying that not everything is bad, but it's just, you know, like when you hear the word cancer and stuff like that, it just sounds like bad. So my mom's pretty much all weekend trying to diagnose me with everything that's going off of Google, which obviously like you can't listen to everything that comes off of the internet. Um, but so she's just saying how it's Hashimoto's disease, it's this, it's that, like you're like, it's not cancer, blah, blah, it's not this, not that. So then, that Monday, I go up to University of Chicago again with my mom, and he examines it, blah, blah, says how we have to get a biopsy done. And for, zo for those of you who don't know what biopsies are, biopsies are ones where um, if you're like under a certain age, they put you to sleep, and then they stick um, a needle in whatever part of the body that they think is cancerous to get a piece of it out to test if it's benign or not. Um, so he had said how we need to get a biopsy done to see if it's cancer because it looks like it could be, but he doesn't know for sure, obviously, until we get that biopsy done. So then we scheduled the biopsy, and I think it was like the next day or two, so then we're having to like keep driving up to University of Chicago, which like obviously like you know like for health reasons and stuff like it, it was important or whatever and stuff. But so then we go up there for the biopsy, get it done, and then um, then we had like another meeting with him like that week or the week after, like to go over the biopsy test because usually like and stuff like they don't happen like right then unless like it's an emergency one. Um, so then it like takes time to test or whatever and stuff. So we had a meeting with him and I remember it was July 15th, the day before my 13th birthday. Um, and I was just like, I don't want to be spending this at the doctor, like, you know, like I'm turning 13, I don't want to be at the doctor, I want to be celebrating it with my friends, planning my awesome birthday party, you know, like just the usual typical kid. And I remember I was just like looking at myself in the mirror, I was like not, like, because I was like, it's not cancer, it's not this, like, you know, like, it's nothing to worry about. He's going to tell me that it's nothing and we can go have a great birthday. So then he ends up telling me how it is cancer and how I have to get my whole thyroid removed because the cancer is literally like surrounding it and how usually, and for people who don't know that much about thyroid cancer, thyroid cancer usually comes in older women um, and, then, and sometimes men too, but it's more... It's more more common in women, but older women. So it was so rare to see a 13, 12, 13 year old getting diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Um, and mine was also an unusual case because mine was spread throughout my entire neck. And thyroid cancer is one of the most slow growing cancers that like it literally like takes like decades that for like it to grow that much and that's why usually when they catch it it's like in smaller spots where people only gonna have to get half their thyroid removed or just parathyroids and not like the whole thing and like mine was literally like up like to like back here or whatever and stuff so they had said that since it was so rare I most likely was born with it just because it usually takes so long but they don't understand how it grew that much if I was only 12 um but so then this whole way home you know we're like upset about like this like about having now to get surgery or whatever and stuff so like we're just trying to enjoy my dad's birthday is actually like two days after mine so like we're trying to enjoy like you know like my birthday and his birthday and everything just because you know like we we're just trying to get our minds off of it but like everything we did obviously this was in the back of our minds this is bothering me so much that my thing is red um obviously like it's in the back of our heads and everything so then like a week later, um, 
Okay, so actually this whole time I was on the cheer team actually too because our like cheer tryouts were like in May for that upcoming year. So like we had like some summer practices and stuff and camps and everything. Um, and so like obviously like we told our co my coaches about it and stuff because I wouldn't be able to participate because I'd be having surgery, just everything like that. Um, so then we told them and they were literally so supportive and so nice and like they literally got like the whole team like it was it was literally like if I didn't have them I don't know like literally what I probably would have done um, but so then so then it comes day for my surgery and um, for surgeries and stuff you obviously like you can't eat anything like before or like um, so like starting at like midnight that night usually you can't eat anything so my um, surgery was scheduled at 10 a.m. so I wasn't able to eat, eat anything after midnight so then we go up there, blah, blah. Well, then my surgeon um, had like an emergency surgery that he had to do real quick. So my surgery got pushed back till one. So I went like 13 hours without eating. Well, probably more than that because I went to bed before midnight, I think. So I went like 13 hours without eating. And like, you know, like that's a long time, especially like if you're up. And I couldn't even like try to take a nap in the waiting room because I was so nervous. And it was just literally like such a scary feeling, but I was feeling so sick because I was so hungry and all I wanted to do was eat and blah, blah and everything. So then it comes time and we go back to like the little like room that like, it's like a waiting room for your like surgery or whatever and stuff. And the anesthesia person comes in, asks me what um, I would, what flavor I would like for my anesthesia. And like he had all these different kinds and I picked green apple because I literally love green apple. Well, that was a bad choice because now anytime I smell something green apple, I think of my surgery and it makes me want to throw up. So that was a bad choice of mine. <laughs> but um, so then it's time. They say that I can walk back. So then I like walked into my surgery room and I like saw like all these people that are going to be operating on me and stuff. And then I get put in my bed and then I literally was knocked out like within 10 seconds probably. And, um, so then next thing I know, I'm in a bed in an elevator and it was like nine hours later. And I remember like my mom was right there next to me and she was like, oh, like she's up, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God, like I've been asleep for that long. Like how long was my surgery? And like my surgery was seven hours, but like I like, after even they took me off the anesthesia, like I was so tired and like everything. So like I stayed asleep for a little bit longer. And so then I get to my room and then they like had to like weigh me and stuff because they always have to do that after surgeries. And I remember I passed out like and everything like because I was literally just like so like drugged up and just like so this. I remember like they were trying to feed me popsicles but I just kept throwing them up. Like I was just, it was not really that good. And like obviously since it was in my neck, like I couldn't turn my neck. Like my neck was literally like this. Like I had to turn like that and everything. And my neck was so sore, it was so like puffy I had all these big bandages on it and it just like I it hurt so bad and so then days later I was released from the hospital and I was able to come home but like and I I mean obviously like I was happy I wasn't in hospital anymore but I still felt like I couldn't do anything because even like laying down like I had to literally like lay like straight like I couldn't move my neck at all it hurt so bad and it was like it for probably like a good amount of time probably like a couple weeks and stuff because I just literally like, couldn't turn my neck at all and so then like we went back up there a couple weeks later for like the you know like the check to make sure everything looks good and um you know like obviously he did an amazing job with the surgery and everything because like I mean you can like barely see my scars um I feel like they've been sticking out a little bit more recently but I think it's just because like like there's one right there he put them in the creases so like you look kind of just looks like a crease but um so I'm like I'm still going to cheer practice and stuff obviously I can't participate but I'm still like this is I want to go to cheer I want to go out and do something or whatever and stuff so next I said like I wear teal blue and pink for Lauren and then Beck said like hashtag prayers for Lauren and they were just being like so 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 nice and everything and then when we started to learn our comp routine then we were going over the lyrics not we were going over the cheer and everything and um they were like telling us like the lyrics and stuff of like what we have to say and um i remember like we were sitting there and stuff and then they were like and this one will be the most important to our team and i was like not expecting it at all and then they were just like um try to beat us even cancer can't win 
So, like, they were literally being so supportive. And, like, so, like, that was going to be the thing at every cheer comp that, like, you know, we performed, we said that. And I, like, literally was, like, so, so, like, so thankful to have them, first of all, and stuff. Because, like, you know, like, I loved cheer and everything. So, it was, like, this is what I loved. And just, like, having them, like, support me and stuff made it even more, like, better and stuff. So, then, so then September comes and stuff. And I go up there for, like another check up ultrasound type thing that's when they see a little bit more on the upper side here and stuff so then um we had an emergency biopsy so that means that i was awake um plus then there were people in there that like we're gonna test it right away so we knew and i was really terrified to be awake because like sorry if you guys don't like you can skip a little bit if you don't hear this but like literally like i was awake when there was needles in my neck like, obviously, they numbed it, but, like, I was still awake, and I, like, I just, it's so weird to think about, but then, um, like, I didn't cry or anything and stuff, because I was just, like, there's nothing I can do, you know, like, and, like, crying's not gonna help it, so, like, I have to do it or whatever and stuff, so then they biopsied it, it was cancer, so then that means another surgery, so then, um, so then the surgery happened, and um so that one since it wasn't in the middle of my neck it was just on the side of my neck I like this side like really hurt so I still obviously couldn't move it really but like it wasn't as bad as the time before so then they thought they got all the cancer out and stuff start this radioactive iodine diet so radioactive iodine is mostly for thyroid cancer patients and it's like it's a radiation kind of like chemo, um, but it's not as long as chemo and you're like in a lead room and stuff by yourself and then like all the radioactive iodine like attacks the cancer that's left or whatever and stuff. Like so like when they mean like the cancer that's left, like little little pieces, like not like big pieces, like they can't do it to like multiple parts or whatever and stuff, like little scar tissues and stuff is what it attacks. I start the diet and everything, literally eating lettuce for lunch, like Kylie would eat, even eat lettuce with me and stuff because I like you know like I couldn't there were like if you look at it like everything has sodium everything has like iodine like I you know like I couldn't eat anything really I could only have one like mini can of um clear pop per day so then um I would have like Sprite or whatever and stuff like one of those mini mini cans you know or whatever and stuff and I would literally eat lettuce there was like this um special meat that I could eat or something like that it w I forget really what it was but so like that was pretty much what I was eating and stuff and like there were people that like at school that would literally like show me a cookie and be like uh -huh, Lauren like do you wish you could have this or whatever and stuff and like I get that they were probably joking or whatever and stuff but it's like that is something like I truly like couldn't help that like I was literally on this diet eating lettuce for lunch so like I literally was just like okay so then I left the lunchroom and I went and sat with I went and sat in like the principal's office area because my cheer coach was the secretary so like I just sat and ate with her and then a bunch of cheerleaders ended up just coming in there too with and eating with me but I was just like I it was just getting like to the point where I was just like look I'm over this because if you were on this diet like it was supposed to be a two-week diet and stuff so yeah so then I started blah blah and then um and then I go up there for the radioactive iodine, literally like the next day I was supposed to be going to the radioactive iodine and I had to do a full body scan to make sure that there wasn't any cancer like in other parts, blah, blah. Come out, they check it, cancel the radioactive iodine because there is more cancer on the like way left side of my neck. And so then literally I just like, I just went on this diet for literally nothing, like not like I, I guess it could have been something, but like I literally went on this diet for nothing and I was so mad because if you know me and stuff, like I love my Taco Bell, my pizza, my chicken tenders, everything like that. And I literally had to eat lettuce for lunch. So then, um, so then that means another surgery. So at this time was cheer comp, or cheer comp season and stuff. So like there was even this one school that like, it was our very first competition. This one school, literally, like, they ordered, like, the Lauren shirts and stuff, and, like, they worked the competitions, and it was just, like, literally, like, crazy to see people, like, in shirts for me, like, and stuff, and, um, so, like, I would go to the competitions. Obviously, I couldn't perform. Okay, so, actually, there was not the first competition, but the second competition I was able to perform in, 
and um it was literally like they they kind of changed the routine around a little bit for me and stuff which so then I could perform because I, I was a back spot in middle school so like the girls would come down on my neck and like that would hurt obviously and stuff so I was changed to a front spot to where like I like wasn't able so it was kind of just like wrote like a little bit of rotation and stuff but we did one first place that competition so that's cool um so I was just really happy that to know like that my last competition that I was in I got first place um because like my middle school like and stuff we were known for cheer and everything like we were state cheer champs and everything um but that year our first competition we got second place so I was like oh like hopefully we don't get second place because then everyone's gonna be like oh my god blah blah whatever and stuff um but we ended up getting first so that was good um but so then my the my third surgery ended up being December 18th and that was like a day before um a cheer competition so like and like I was one where even if I couldn't perform I still wanted to go to every single competition because because that was my team and like I'm gonna cheer them on whether or not I can be on the mat so I so then I was super bummed that I couldn't go to that cheer competition because I just had surgery the day before and so I had that surgery so then there's that um so that was that side and then um and they were trying to like move stuff along like you know, like super quick get it all like fast fast so we can get the radioactive iodine out of the way so then um I started that diet at the beginning of January or no it would have been like two it was like at the beginning of January so then I went in for my full body scan again to make sure that everything was good so then I could um do my radioactive iodine so then I go in do it good we are in the clear we're good to go so I'm doing my radioactive iodine the next day so then the next day we go up there and um I literally had to drink the radioactive iodine because usually you people swallow pills and um but I'm one where even to this day I still cannot swallow a pill um I know it sounds very childish or whatever and stuff but just there I, I just can't or whatever and stuff so I literally had to drink the radioactive iodine all in one sip and I literally was just like oh my god I'm not gonna be able to do this so I did it and I'm literally in this lead room by myself my mom is next door but anytime someone wanted to come into the room like a nurse or my mom they had to dress up like an astronaut is what I said that they looked like um, because there was one time where I couldn't fi even figure out how the shower worked and my mom had to come in and she literally had to go in this full suit and yeah and then the nurse that would come in and give me my medicine full-on suit like she only had this part of where she could see literally they looked like astronauts so then I was in this room for two days and it was super boring because I couldn't even have my phone because anything that got brought into that room had to get thrown away because it was contaminated with radioactive iodine which can harm others who aren't in it for the treatment so like that's why like if my mom was to walk in and be near me without that suit it could cause her to have problems because she doesn't have cancer that it's attacking so that's why I was like isolated literally by myself so then they let me pick like three movies that I could watch and I just you know like after that long it gets boring and stuff so so I finally get released and because the more water you drink and like the more you pee out the faster it goes and stuff so like some people are in there for five days some people could be in there for a day like it all depends so like I was trying to drink a bunch of water take showers everything like that and um so then I got out at like two days but then even when I got out I had to continue on the diet for the next until the next morning so then um and then when I came home um no one was allowed near like a certain amount of feet with me I had to have my own bathroom for a couple weeks and so like, I mean uh, with I mean it's only Rachel and I that like really shared a bathroom so she just uh, yeah, had to use my parents and then so like no one was allowed really in there um we had to put stuff all over the door handles because if I touched a door handle no one else was allowed to touch it and I I think I believe also like I wore gloves at all times just because that any clothes I wore had to be thrown out it was just like really bad I just felt like I you know like couldn't like I want like and people were wanting to come and visit me and stuff because I was home but like no like it's like it was to the point where it was like they couldn't be by me and everything so there was really like no point kind of um like I literally just would sit in my bed and like it was just like it was a really boring time <laughs> but 
and then I wasn't allowed back at school for like another week so then I would literally just sit at home and like you know do nothing and so then I go back up there to make sure that like that radioactive iodine got everything and it did um like and stuff so that is good so then I was on high risk of like it returning though because I am so young or whatever and stuff and so then I had gone up there for my six month check and it was good so that is good and to this day actually just three days ago I went up for my one year check again and I was cleared so that is good great news um, for the past like three it'd be three years um, I've gotten cleared it was super exciting so then after that six month thing it was in November um, I had an ultrasound and she had said how she would call us like or, or email us like with, uh, within the next couple days on it and we had gotten a message that night saying that I was officially cleared so that is super super exciting I literally could not be more happy um, to this day I still obviously have like some problems or whatever and stuff like um, if you know me and stuff and you didn't know this, but like this whole side of my face and neck and stuff is numb because during that last surgery, um, there was some nerve damage and sometimes the nerves like rebuild and everything and they start up again and they said how like, after a year it should. Well, that never ended up happening. So that's just something I'm going to have to live with obviously, but like my cartilage I got up here. Um, I got it in this ear, especially because I did not feel that whatsoever when I was getting it pierced. Um, so, yeah. So, that's something that, like, I have. So, like, I, like, even, like, after I got it pierced, everyone was like, well, don't lay on it. Don't lay on it and stuff. And I would lay on it and, like, it would be fine. Um, so, like, you can, like, touch my ear and stuff and, like, I don't really feel it. This, like, whole side of my neck right here, I don't really feel um obviously with my energy I do have some problems just because if you don't know a thyroid is something that gives you energy and so like a thyroid is what controls your energy and what gives you energy and I obviously take a pill well I chew the pill every morning um just because so it gives me something but I mean it obviously doesn't work as well as a thyroid does so like that's why like when it comes to PE or whatever and stuff like I couldn't ever like like for the mile and stuff like they tried to get me to do that and like I literally could not finish it within the time because I get so exhausted and so tired so fast um and like that's why I just like if like you know like if you ever see me like even just trying to run or something like that I can never run for that long because of that and stuff um just because you know like of that so so yeah um but so I have that and then um, I don't know. It's just like, it's a weird thing to like think about that like, you know, as a little kid and stuff, I just, whenever I heard the word cancer, I always thought it was like a terrible thing and stuff. And like, honestly, like in everything, like it's just so scary to think about that like going into that physical and stuff, like I just never expected my whole eighth grade, like my whole eighth grade year to be like, you know, like I don't even remember eighth grade year really at all except for my thyroid cancer like that's all that I remember like I would go to school and I'd be so tired especially right like I've built up more energy and stuff so, like especially eighth grade year and stuff I was literally so tired where every day even freshman year I'd have to come home and take a nap like it was so so bad but it was just like I was just so tired and exhausted all the time like I couldn't like ever do anything and so like don't get me wrong I still take naps to this day I've always been a nap taker but like it's just it's not as much now and so like it was just like it was getting to the point where it was like I'd get asked to do something and I'd be so tired so I would just have to go take a nap and um like it's just weird to think about that like I at one point had cancer and everything like I don't know if it's just me but it's just really weird to think about but one thing that has like one thing that I did do this whole time was I never like showed anyone oh my god why I don't know why like I never oh my god okay so one thing that like I did do this entire time of like being going through that and everything 
was just I never showed anyone any emotion other than positivity because in my mind and stuff, I mean, I was 12, 13, in my mind, crying about it and being sad was not going to change what had happened or what I have to go through. So, and I get not everyone can like put on this face and just like smile for people all the time and and I like I get it. I get that sometimes you have to show your emotions and stuff. But like even to my parents and stuff, they'd be so upset because they're like, "Oh my god, like my baby has to go through this." But like I would literally just be like, "Why are you guys crying? Like crying's not going to change it and stuff. Like let's smile and let's be happy that like today's Tuesday or just like something like that." So like and there was like there were so many people that had said like that like anytime someone would ask me how my surgery went or how my radioactive iodine went or how I am and stuff, I never like obviously I told them and stuff, but I never showed anything other than a smile because you know, like I wanted to be positive and stuff and I love smiling. Literally smiling is my favorite thing in the world and I love positivity. So it's just like, why be sad about it when it's still gonna happen, when you can be happy about it or be positive about it and it still happened. So that was one thing, even the surgeon was like, I've never seen anyone like so like, <laughs> smiley and like okay with the situation but like obviously there were times where I laid in my bed at night and I cried myself to sleep because I was so upset because I was like why does my eighth grade have to go to this because like at eighth grade and stuff we were such a tight click like there was a group of us and stuff where we would always hang out and obviously like, I was still like invited and they still hung out with me but like there was a lot of things that I couldn't go to because of my surgeries or because of doctor's appointments and I mean obviously there were people that did talk crap I'm if I'm being honest um there was this group of girls at my middle school who literally started a rumor that I put the cancer inside of me for attention like I'm sorry but do you want to know how stupid you sound first of all because first of all you can't put cancer inside of someone like that and like yes I did that for attention like no are you like seriously like can you grow up and be mature about it like literally this is like like I don't know it was just I don't know so like obviously there were times that I cried myself to sleep and I was so upset about it all and literally all I wanted to do was cry but anytime I went to school I put a smile on my face and if someone would ask me I'd be like yeah I'm fine like or whatever and stuff and so I get sometimes it's not good to hide your emotions or whatever and stuff but I just didn't want any negative because negativity spreads and stuff so I just didn't want any of my negativity about the situation to go on to others about the situation so that's why I wanted it all to be positive and I wanted everyone just to be happy and stuff whether or not like whether or not it was hard that's what I wanted and I get that I don't know I feel like I'm talking in circles now but I don't know so I get that this was a very long story time and if you actually listen to this whole thing um thank you <laughs> so yeah I get I don't know hopefully that you guys kind of understood the whole st story and everything so yeah okay well I'm going to be quiet now because it is already like a 40 minutes in I am rolling so okay alrighty guys well I did hope you guys all enjoyed this video and if you want to see any other story times or just any videos in general you want to see make sure to comment below what you want to see um, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video bye